المخلوق ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم. We continue inshallah ta'ala with the book of Anaj al-Salikin, Imam al-Sabi rahimahullah, matters of fiqh. And we had started with the new chapter a few times before, with the biyu' and mu'amalat, transactions, by and sin. And we were talking about the conditions, the conditions for the buying or selling to be valid. And he says from these conditions, وَمِنْ الشُّرُوطِ أَلَّا يَقَعَ الْعَقْدُ عَلَى مُحَرَّمِ شَرْحًا That one of these conditions that the aqd or the contract is not to be established on something that is religiously haram. That means you cannot buy something that is haram. You should not buy something that is haram. And you should not sell something that is haram. This is a rule. It doesn't change. You don't need a specific dalil for every specific something that is haram to say that it's haram to sell. So there's no need for a specific hadith to say that selling uh, drugs is haram. Right? It's something that should be obvious because this is the principle. And there's a, the Prophet said this principle as the hadith in Sahih Muslim and others, إِذَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ شَيْئًا حَرَّمَ ثَمَنًا حَرَّمَ بَيْعًا clearly states if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade something, then he forbid it's uh, the money that you get as a result of selling it. Another nation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forbid selling it, period. So anything that is haram, then it's haram to sell. So this is one of the conditions. But does it make the transaction valid but it's haram, or the transaction from the start is not valid? You see the difference? He can sell, a person can sell something haram. The transaction itself is valid, but he committed a sin. Or the transaction from the start, it's not valid. That means the person that purchased the haram, he has the right to come back and to say, I need my money back, this was haram, I didn't know, something like that. The majority of the ulama, and this is a correct opinion, inshallah ta'ala, that the transaction is not valid to start with. Because it's haram. So buying and selling anything that is haram is sinful and the transaction is not valid also. So why? Because this is one of the conditions for the bay' or for the transaction to be valid. And again with the questions, inshallah, we'll keep it to the end because there's many questions when we talk about transactions. Well, first we understand what he says and then at the end of there's any questions, inshallah. So this, this is from ash -Shur. Then he talks uh, that the, act, the, the, the contract is not valid if it's established on something that is haram. And then he classifies the haram uh, into two categories. Either this haram is because what you're purchasing is haram. That means it's the, the thing itself. You're selling something, that thing is haram. As the Prophet forbade selling al khamr Al-Khamr uh, is alcohol intoxications and it's named Al-Khamr because it covers like khimar, like the khimar of the woman that when she wears this uh, head cover, it's called khimar, the same root meaning, something that covers because khamr covers one's mind, it's not able to function properly. So anything that covers one's mind, anything that intoxicates one's mind, then it's khamr, it doesn't have to be a bottle with a label, right? Anything that intoxicates one's mind, it uh, comes under the category of khamr. So the Prophet ﷺ clearly uh, forbade selling it, well maita, anything that has been uh, dead without slaughter, anything that is permissible for us to eat, and it died hatfa and fiha, meaning uh, without being uh, slaughtered in the proper way. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ forbade selling it, and selling anything in it. Well, Asnam, uh, idols or statues, anything that has uh, a soul, the statue of a human being or uh, animals. Well, hadith mutafakun alayhi, this is uh, an authentic hadith in Bukhari, a Muslim, and so on. This is not permissible to make a contract on these things because this is one of the conditions and it's haram, right? Uh, which is more haram? 
this is something that I'm not talking about, but it's all haram anyway, right? It's having something less haram than something else. It doesn't make it easier for a person to indulge in. It's all haram, right? But of course, uh, which is more harmful, then definitely the sin is more. So some said, as Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, that uh, selling an aslam or the idols or the statues is uh, worse. Why? Because it's the hikmah or the wisdom behind forbidding it is so that people do not fall into the worst sin ever and that is a shirk in that Allah Ta'ala associating partners with Allah. Even if people do not do that, right? Because there is so much shubha that people say, statues now or, you know, uh, things that people put decorations in their home, <coughs> small statues of, you know, the human beings or animals or whatever, uh, people don't have any attachment in their hearts towards these things. But what is haram, as we heard before, one of the principles of what is haram, it does not change by good intentions. If it's haram, it's haram. You can have the best intentions, you can have it for whatever good reason, it does not change the fact that it's haram. So it's, uh, it's, it's forbidden, and this is consensus among, among the people of knowledge because of the ayat and the hadith of the Prophet and uh, the people now would not be uh, much uh, better than, or better than the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, as if they're saying we're far away from worshipping idols, but the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, maybe they were close to this. Anyway, the wisdom behind it, or not knowing the wisdom behind it, it's haram. So till the day of judgment, it's haram to sell these things of images and so on. Uh, and also with uh, the, the mayta, of course it's all haram, except what the Prophet ﷺ excluded from this, which is al-jarad wal-samak, or mayta al-samak wal-jarad. As the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked, by Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma when the hadith of Ibn Umar when he was asked about al-bahr when he was asked about the, the sea or the ocean about the water of it is it permissible for us to use the Prophet said huwa al-hillu huwa al-tahuru ma'u al-hillu maytatuhu that the water of the sea or the ocean and so on it's tahur it's uh, pure to use and to make wudu with and to make ghusl with it's water and when hillu maytatuhu, the Prophet ﷺ added something that was not part of the question as of the generosity of the Prophet ﷺ even in answering his questions. He said that the, the mayta or what is dead in it, it's halal for us. Meaning you don't slaughter a fish. Anything that lives in the water, then it's permissible for us to eat. You don't have to slaughter it or to say bismillah before you, uh, you know, get it from the sea and so on, just before you eat. Uh, so this is the mayta and the khinzir and the pig and the aslam or the idols. Uh, then he says, uh, وإما, So the first part, it's haram if it itself haram. Then it's not permissible to sell it. Or, وَإِمَّا لِمَا يَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ خَطِيعَةِ مسلم. Or maybe the implications of the contract is something that is harmful or, or haram, like severing the relationship with a Muslim. Buying and selling something that will cause harm to others, or cause the relationship to be severed, or things like this. كَمَا نَهَى النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, As the Prophet ﷺ forbade عَنِ الْبَيْعِ عَلَى بَيْعِ مُسْلِمْ To uh, buy is to sell. عَلَى بَيْعِ الْمُسْلِمْ To sell on the selling of a Muslim. Meaning that someone uh, would uh, purchase uh, something, for example, ten dollars, and then someone else he would come to him and he would tell him, uh, give it back to him. I give it to you with eight dollars. I have a better deal than that person. Go return it, right? I will give you a better deal. That's how uh, you're causing harm to that first person, right? You're not being or giving nasiha or having the concern to the Muslim. You're benefiting yourself because you're you're making money. You want to sell your goods, so you will do that. This is not permissible. Is it only between the Muslims or it's also forbidden uh, among everybody, Muslims and disbelievers? Jumhur of the the majority of the that this is Muslims and non-Muslims. It's forbidden for a Muslim to do that. If somebody already purchased something, right, then it's not permissible for you to tell him, and you're the owner of the same thing because you want to make money, and give it back, and I, even if you're doing him a favor. If you purchase it, that's it then it is not permissible to do that. And also the Prophet ﷺ, which is not mentioned here, he forbade as-sawm ala sawm al-Muslim. As-sawm is when you're still bargaining or you decided that you will purchase, you, you're negotiating with the person, 
but the, the transaction itself didn't occur. You talked about it and you said, okay, I'll buy it for 10. Okay, sure. You know, for them for, to meet maybe the next day. So the transaction is not done yet. So you heard that, you get to know that, you will go to him, then don't buy from him, I'll give it to you with a better price. That's not permissible. Right? So uh, this is a very important point because many people, they do that. And so the Prophet ﷺ forbid that. And of course, you put yourself in the position of uh, the first one. Right? He will not like that. Uh, this is, unless he's a thief or something, but the normal buying and selling of people, this is something that should be respected. So the Prophet ﷺ, and as the hadith the Prophet said, no one is to buy on uh, one's uh, buying, uh, as it's mentioned, Sahih Muslim and others. Um, the same thing with purchasing, it's not just selling, right? You can do that with purchasing, so it's all forbidden. And also to, sell, uh, to purchase something uh, on the purchasing of someone else, right? So. Uh, you purchase something for $10, for example, then someone would, tell, would, would say, give it to me and, and you would take it with 10 or with less. This is all that means. So, when uh, and also when it's forbidden because it leads to enmity among people and it's forbidden by the statement of the Prophet ﷺ, is a najash and what it means is that you would increase the price of something without the intention to purchase it in an auction. Basically, in an auction, a person would put his, his merchandise and people would bid on it, right? And someone, and this is always happens in auctions. Someone is standing there, he doesn't want to purchase it. He's just, his job is to increase the price, to get people excited. So he would say, 10. He's not into the business whatsoever of buying it. Or he's from one of the uh, competitors or from the same one that is selling. He's the, he's the same one that's selling a car, for example, one of his workers. He goes and he bids on it without people knows, without people knowing, right? So that they went someone with him competing with him or thinking, oh, he has some experience. So you start, they start increasing. Sometimes in auctions, it's a, it's a, it's an, it's addicting type of thing, right? So people start increasing. So this is forbidden, of course, and it's very obvious that it's forbidden. This is a person that is cheating. So when a Muslim would increase or say something or say a price, it doesn't have to be an auction setup. You can be standing in a store, right? and something is not like priced or anything and someone is purchasing something and he would say I want uh, and give it for more or something just to increase the price of it anything that a person would say or do to increase the price of something without the intention of himself purchasing it just to increase its price this is not permissible, this is haram and it's again uh, very obvious very obvious that it's something that has to do with cheating then he said, وَمِن ذَلِكَ Again, if there's any questions, inshallah, don't forget it. نَهْيُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ عَنِ التَّفْرِيقِ بَيْنَ ذِي الرَّحِمِ فِي الرَّقِيقِ Also from this is what the Prophet ﷺ forbade uh, when people, when they purchasing slaves to separate someone from his family, uh, slaves, right? So uh, a son from his mother. If they are one family, then they either go together or to be left together. Uh, because of that would cause harm to them, they will be separated. So they have to be together. And there's a hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad where the Prophet said, Man bayna walidatin waladiha, Allahu bayna wa Whoever uh, separates, and this is general, whether it's in slavery or anything else. Whoever separates between a mother and, its, uh, and her son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him separated from his loved ones in the day of judgment. Always the reward or the punishment is given from the same sort of deed that a person do. Uh, any form of injustice, you would find that the punishment of it is from the same, from the same deed, from the same thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. Also he says, وَمِنْ ذَلِكَ إِذَا كَانَ الْمُشْتَرِي تَعْلَمُ مِنْهُ أَنَّهُ يَفْعَلُ الْمَعْصِيَ لِمَشْتَرَةً Very important principle from this condition. If the purchaser, the one that is purchasing whatever good that is, تَعْلَمُ مِنْهُ You know from him أَنَّهُ يَفْعَلُ الْمَعْصِيَ بِمَشْتَرَةً That he would do a sin with what he purchased. Can you sell him this thing? The answer is no. Uh, how would you know? Right? The ulama, they say, إِمَّا 
قرينة الحال أو المقال which meaning uh, الحال right الحال meaning this is a person that uh, he is in the business of uh, the the owner of uh, of a, of, a, of a wine factory right and you uh, growing grapes you have a lot of grapes that you want to sell and he comes to you the owner of this company whatever they want to purchase all of the grapes that you have right you don't have to ask them what you're going to do with it you know that they're going to use it to make wine with it right selling grapes is halal no problem right but to sell it to someone to to make it wine that's haram because he would use it for haram so you cannot say i'm selling something that is halal it's absolutely halal yes it's halal but you know that he will use it for haram it's not something that is doubtful you're not supposed to ask people when they come and purchase from you grapes what are you going to do with the grapes are you going to use it in a halal way haram way of course not you just sell it to people but if you know that people would use it in something haram then it's not permissible for you to sell it another example is selling uh, for example, uh, makeups, right? Or women clothes would make it difficult for some. Women clothes that is to show that showing more than it, uh, you know, it's not like hijab or something that, that she can wear outside. She can only wear to her husband and things like this. But if you know that women would take it and wear it in the streets, right? This piece of clothing, if it's otherwise it's halal, everything else is halal in it. It's permissible for a Muslim woman to to buy a dress, for example, for her husband, right? Or to wear at home, it's halal. And for someone to sell this, it's halal. But if he knows that a woman would purchase it to wear it in the streets and to uh, cause fitna for others, then it's not permissible for her to sell that to her. He's, he cannot be selective, of course, right? So to be away from that business. Uh, or makeup for someone that she would use it for in a haram way. And it's not permissible to sell it to uh, you know someone like that. But if you are in an environment where no women put any makeup in the streets whatsoever, or an environment that you can select, if some places, for example, where, you know, in Egypt, for example, if somebody enters, that if you if someone selling makeup and a woman having makeup on and she enters and she wants me, she says, I'm not going to sell it to you. Why she leaves? She's not going to call the police for it. You know, something like that. There's no too much regulations, right? If he only says makeup to be sold only for, uh, you know, Naqabi women, something like that, <laughs> if it's halal. What I'm saying is, if he knows that from, again, a woman enters the store with full makeup on, and she wants to buy makeup, and he says it's halal, maybe she's just going to put it for her husband. No, the matter is very obvious, very clear. So, Qarinit al-Hal doesn't have to be said by the situation of that person that is purchasing. And al-Maqal, if somebody would say while he's purchasing, he's purchasing, a gun and says, I'm going to kill them, this person, right? And he's purchasing a gun. Is it permissible for you to sell the gun for him if it's legal for you to, to, to sell gun anyway? No, of course it's not permissible, right? Uh, even if a person has a license and everything, if he goes to the store where he's purchasing a gun, would they sell the gun to him? They're probably going to call the police on him. So either something is said or it looks like that way. Or he enters the store with so much anger on his face and he wants to even purchase a knife which is fine to sell a knife. But this person, you, he looks like he's going to kill somebody with this knife. That is not permissible for you to sell the knife for him. So again, it's not something that is difficult. It's something very obvious. People would do that, uh, but uh, with, with the things that they find dangerous, but also anything that is harm. But he mentioned some of the examples. Kishtara al jaws wal bayt bil qimar When people purchase things for gambling, right? Like uh, eggs or... Uh, the jaws is, is the, this uh, fruit that they use to make, uh, to play with it, like gambling. Uh, or, I was al fitna, to sell uh, arms at times of fitna. People are killing each other. Can you sell arms for them to go kill one another? This is not permissible. Or to give it to someone that, uh, you know, steal people when they're traveling and so on. And this is all not permissible. And the condition or the principle in this, وَتَعَوَنُوا عَلَى الْبَرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Help one another in matters of taqwa, obedience to Allah, and do not help one another in matters of sins. Right? So this is one of the issues that should be very clear. Also, uh, he said, عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ He says, وَلَهِهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ عَنْ تَلَقِّ الْجَلَبِ The Prophet ﷺ forbade 
Tarakil Jalab is uh, getting the, the merchandise from someone that is from not from the city. And there's a hadith here, first Tarakul Jalab, or Bay' al Hadr bil Badi, someone in the town and someone coming from the Bedouin or from the desert, but this is the original uh, hadith means, and he doesn't know what's the price in the city. So he comes, so the people, the, 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 the business people or the trade people, they go outside of the city waiting for them. They don't tell them what's the price of what they're having in the city. So they take it very cheap from them. And they go to the city and sell it to the people. In which if that Bedouin comes in, he would sell it very cheap and people will benefit. So the Prophet ﷺ forbade that. And he said, let the, let the people, let the people Allah provides from them from one another. Don't intervene to uh, make the price higher and monopoly uh, and all kinds of things like that. He said, let, let the people do it. So this is a form of deceiving, very obvious, right? Deceiving the one that is coming and deceiving the people in the city and making the prices high. And many of the things that is done in the business day today, I mean, in business today, you will find many things that is so much deceiving and things like that. Definitely, it should be forbidden. He said, do not get the ones that is coming from outside. Prophet said, if a person purchases goods that way and his, uh, the owner comes to the market, then uh, he has the choice whether to continue with the transaction or to uh, breach this contract, he has the right. So the one that purchased it, he should not say when I purchased it. He, it's too late. No, it's not too late because he got it from outside so that he would make a better price and, and hurt people this way. Uh, so it's not uh, all the way. It's only if uh, the person would approve of it. And that person that's coming from outside, if he gets to know the price, then maybe he will change his mind, right? Uh, so this is also one uh, thing that is not permissible as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Uh, and from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the transaction is valid, but it waits for the uh, permission, from the, for the approval of the, the owner of things. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ غَشَّنَا فَلَيْسَ General Hadith, Sahih Muslim. مَنْ غَشَّنَا Whoever deceives us is not one of us. Right? That means it's a sinful act to deceive people with all what deceiving means. Right? And as he would mention also, uh, uh, this, is, this is by itself is enough. Uh, you're buying something and, or you're selling something and you're not telling the people what's in it from defense. Right? This is cheating. This is deceiving them. Uh, can you say, the Ramah talked about this issue, you sell ma'al bara'a min al -ayn. You sell something as is, right? Uh, if there's anything in it, I'm not responsible. You check it, you figure it out, right? It's permissible if you don't know any defect in it. So you're selling your car, you don't know any problem in it, right? But the guy might purchase it now, and then right after he purchases it, he turns the car on and it breaks down, right? He has the right to return because there's a mistake in it, or there's something, the fault in it, before the, the act. Right? It's not like he did it or he left with it. No, there's something in it before the contract. So he has the right to return it back. Right? But if you don't know, right, it's, it's, it's permissible for you, there's no harm. But if a person knows of a defect in his car, he should mention the defect in it. He should say that this has something in it and, and this what's in it and so on. The Prophet ﷺ said, al bil khiyar ma lam That the buyer and the seller uh, it's up to them. They have the choice as long as they did not depart from the Majlis uh, al or from the time where they're making the transaction or the country. If they depart, that's it. The matter is final. But as long as they're together, meaning that if you're sitting with someone and you're writing the contract, selling a car or house or anything, and you finished everything and you sign the contract, right? And you took a copy and you take a copy. Now you can say, I don't want it anymore. You have the right to do that. You cannot say you signed it, sorry, and he runs away. No, you have the right as long as you're still sitting. Right? You still did not depart from each other. Once you leave, you depart from each other, then it's fine. And this is why sometimes you, uh, you want something so bad, but really once you get it, uh, it's not really that you want it, you regret it. Right? 
So see, they didn't give you that. And, and the, the other side, he's not, he did not lose anything. He's still as if he just two minutes or after, after, before or after, doesn't make a difference. So as long as they're together, so they have the khiyar, they have the, the, the choice to break the contract as long as they are together. Uh, then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِنْ صَدَقَ وَبَيَّنَا بُورِكَ لَهُمْ فِي وَيْنِهِ If they صَدَقَ, if they were honest and truthful, and they showed بَيَّنَا made it clear, and that when it comes to the faults or the defaults and the, and the thing that they're selling, بُورِكَ لَهُمَا فِي وَيْنِهِمَا Allah would bless the, their transaction. وَإِنْ كَذَبَ وَكَتَمَا مُحِقَدْ بَرَكَةُ وَيْنِهِمَا And if they lie or hide, right? You might not lie, yes, but you're hiding something that you know there is a problem in what you're selling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away the barakah from it. And you really, a person needs the barakah. He does not need the money, he needs the barakah with it. A person can get a million, and then he loses it the next day, or he loses more than whatever, or the punishment in the he left, right? So what really matters is the barakah. And the barakah is that the khayr stays with the person. Not that he has khayr, but then he loses it, but that stays with him. So this is a very important principle. Uh, should we stop at this point because it still continues. So again, what is haram as a condition? Either the haram itself is to buy and sell it, or what leads to some evil, which clearly again with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, or anything that comes under this category that people introduce in matters of buying and selling. After that, he's talking about the, uh, the matter of al tahayyul which is a big subject, right? People. Uh, playing tricks or making deception, deceiving others in buying and selling. Instead, knowing that riba is haram, so uh, they don't do a riba like this, they do it like this. Right? They change the names. And as Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, dirham bi dirham wa baynahum hariram. Right? They want the money for money, which is riba, money for money. So they inject in between a piece of silk or something to make it uh, legal. Or buying and selling. But in reality, they, they don't care about that thing that is being sold. They care about money making money. Right? Not buying and selling goods and so on. So there are many forms of people making up their own ways to a means of deception. And as a rule, al-hila or deception is forbidden in Islam period. There is no such an exception where it's okay to, 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 to deceive others or to do something like that. It's always forbidden. Always forbidden. So inshallah maybe we will talk that next week inshallah. And if you have questions, you must have time at least.